آؤزبلشیطانجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان دینا عند اللہ الاسلام صدق اللہ العظیم ربش رحلی صدری و یسر علی عمری وحل العقدم السانی یفق قولی ریسپیکٹڈ ویورز اینڈ لسنرز السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ دا ورس وچ آئی ہیو کوٹڈ ان دا بگننگ از فرام سورا عل عمران اللہ سیز ان دینا عند اللہ الاسلام دا وے آف لائف ان فرنٹ آف اللہ از اسلام آئی آلویز سے ان مائی لیکچرس اسلام از دی ٹوٹل سوشیو پولیٹیکل اکنامک سسٹم اٹس ناٹ جسٹ رائٹس اینڈ ریچولس ٹوڈے دا ٹاپک از مائی اینالیسس آف پاکستان I was in Pakistan for 15 days and I want to share to my viewers, listeners that what I observed in Pakistan is my vantage. I do not need anybody's endorsement. It's my personal, intrapersonal rather, my experience, what I, what I observed, what I see on and on or what I saw. You see, it is amazing that in Pakistan, we are living in complete dilemma. How? You find people sleeping on the streets. You do find people spending a lot of money into rich places, uh, these uh, malls, shopping centers, hi-fi restaurants, etc. And you find some people who are not even meeting up normal living standards. It's a strange country. That is why IMF, they are confused either to support Pakistan or not. Because when they visit and they did survey, they came to know there are so many rich people. How come the country cannot produce any taxes? Because people are doing money laundering. For many years, corruption is going on between elites and especially the politicians. And this thing, they are worried and they are not satisfied because they know or they knew that something is not right on the ground reality. Yeah, we do find things on, you know, on media, on reports that they are something Uh, poverty is rising in Pakistan. It is. But once you reach there, when you see from your naked eyes, things are quite different. And today, with this is I'm what I'm going to share with my viewers. But I saw from my own eyes, not what people say or what others ought to mean, you know, all these things. No, not here says I am the eyewitness and I saw what is there going on. You see, Every country runs by two standards, either by remittances, coming money, coming from other rich countries to your own country, or you have enough GDP to develop these cross domestic products and export them into the rest of the world. So these way, these two things goes up and down and the country runs. Unfortunately, for many months, the remittances have been reduced. Why? Because people do not trust the current government. And these things are becoming a great issue in coming years. People have no realization. Banks are calling overseas Pakistanis or overseas people that try to invest money and people are reluctant to invest because they are afraid because it is too much weak or fragile system going on economical point of view. I am going to divide today's lecture into three social system in Pakistan, political system in Pakistan and economical system in Pakistan, which I observe as a vantage, my feeling intrapersonal. And this is what we can analyze at the end of the video in my lecture that what is the solution? What should we do now? 
You see, in the beginning, the ayah which I have read is that in the deen in the lahil islam, the religion, the way of life, which is accepted in sight of Allah is Islam. Meaning the true methodology which is laid by Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and the true blueprints laid by four guided caliphates. There is no other way to succeed. If you want to follow that, it is good for us. If not, then fine. Allah says one more place. Anyone comes in the hereafter, other religion, ism or religion other than Islam will be the loser or will be in a great loss. Other ism, any other philosophy, whatever you name it, Allah says you will be a loser in hereafter. And in dunya too, and we can already see that, it's not the topic, what capitalism has produced, what communism, socialism has produced or had produced, and what this Western democracy have been producing. We don't need to go far. We can see from our own eyes right now in the current contemporary histories. I saw strange things in Pakistan. A guy is sleeping on a road. He has no home, no shelter, no ghettos, nothing, no shacks, no huts. Then you go to another Porsche areas like defense or cantonment Kent under the army. People having big houses like canals. And they don't have any sense of empathy towards poor people. And what's the main philosophy? Just think about yourself. Don't need to worry. Don't destroy your vacation. Just enjoy your life when you come there. Don't think about those poor people. You know, wallahi. I became sick. Mentally sick. In Pakistan. When I saw these people, I can't. My heart was, you know, burst into tears. Those poor people living under, under the so low conditions, less than dollars. And nobody pays attention, nobody cares. As this, these are destination, these are destined, you know, uh, these people have been destined toward these kind of poverty. Poor parts, more than poor. And they're living and no hope. And every false promise by the current leader. False promise, false hopes. And they are living on what motivation, I'm asking. No motivation. They are living on happenstance. You see happenstance in political point of view or normally we say it. When some things are going by default or by something else. Like for example, you're going somewhere and by happenstance looking for water, you found oil. This is happenstance. You were not looking for oil. This is what's happening. Pakistan has been going on through happenstance. That's all. The genesis of Pakistan was what? Why did we get separated from India? If we have to follow the same culture, rituals, rites, and their movies, and their heroes, our idols. What is the point of being separated? What was the two nation theory by Ilama Iqbal? I'm asking, what was it? It was that we are different nation. Our history, our culture, our socialism, our politics, everything is different from India, from Hindus and Christians, vice versa. But now look at us. We have broken the promise of God Almighty that oh Allah, this country was made. You know, Pakistan was made, literally made through these proclamations or, you know, uh, signs or slogans of that La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu And we did deceived Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So Allah has forfeit us. No more job for us. You go there in Pakistan, people are confused, don't know what to do. Where is the leader? What is the way? What is the right way? Every person has been flim flaming, hoodwinking the other guy. Every person. His the main motivation is to earn money, money, money. That's all. Mint money, stash money, hoard money, hoard things. And just go for profits after profits. Nobody cares is your money coming halal or haram. Prophet says that riba has so many branches. And the least sin of eating riba usually interest is that somebody is committing adultery or fornication with his mother in public. Can you take this? And nobody speaks on the real issues of 
interest we are eating. Not even ulamas with respect. I do Islamic work, alhamdulillah, and I respect ulamas. But this is what reality is. Even ulamas, they, are, they don't care about, they are not obliged anymore to talk about these issues. And every interest going on, this is the main thing. Allah says that if you do not abhor this interest, then Allah and His Rasul will engage war against you. We are under war against Allah and Rasul. Astaghfirullah. What are we going to do and how are we going to come out and have it? Preaching and guidance we ought to do to others. Proselytizing. Our proselytizing is zero. Because Allah says that you are already war with me and his messenger. Imagine that, this warning. And how easy for us. We don't care. We have no idea. Proper understanding of monetary system. Nobody has a time. Everybody's in a rat race game. And now this is what uh, we have become. Animals, social animals. Money, money, money. Everybody has the money. Get money. Mint money. Fool people. You know, try to loot them. Flim flam them. Hoodwink them. You know, spam. Cheat. And all these things going on. Bullying going on. Cyber bullying going on. Cyber uh, cheating going on. Cyber, uh, you know, thefts going on in Pakistan. This is happening. As you arrived in the airport, you see the people start taking unfair advantage of you. They see the flights. Okay, which flight is coming from where? If the flight is coming from America, okay, they will try to make and loot you as, you know, the guy looking to American person. It's coming from the Middle East, they know how to loot Middle East. Every person is being looted according to his nationality. What I observed in Pakistan? Number one, I'm talking about social laws. Every woman in Pakistan do not cover their heads. 95%. As I repeat again, my observation, which I saw where I visited the places in Lahore. I said 95% women were uncovered by their heads. What are you talking about? Is this the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Is this the Ummah? Tell me. Are you the daughters of you know, the, the uh, Fatima radiyatullah anha, Aisha radiyatullah anha, are these women your role model? Or those women who were prostitutes in the past, the, these actresses in the, which we do, do dances and all that stuff are your role models? Tell me, who are your role models? 95% I said. Then, the dress code, all fahsh. Inna Allah la ya'maru fil fahsha. Allah says, he does not, in Surah Al-Imran, sorry, in, in Surah Araf, Allah does not command anyone to do fahsh, to do immodesty, or to represent or present immodesty. Everybody, inna Allah la ya'maru bil fahsha. Everybody is doing this. 95% I see. Then, their satar is naked. Their satar are naked. Their trousers, their shirts, are above the wrists and above the ankles. And this is the fashion. Translucent. Translucent dresses. Which Prophet ﷺ forbade haram, haram. These women will never enter Jannah. Their hairs are not covered. Their dress will be there, but they will be considered naked. These are wa'id already said in Prophet ﷺ. The time will come that people will be like that. 95%. What you're talking about? Few people, few women you will see that they have niqab and hijab, alhamdulillah. And there's another problem. Some people, they have their stereotypical concept. If the woman in Pakistan is doing hijab and niqab, she must be a prostitute, astaghfirullah, because they are doing this. Everything has become a mockery in Islam, of, uh, in Pakistan, about the Islamic socialism. Then, rites and rituals, go to marriages, all Hindus, waza mein ho, nasara tamaddun mein hanood, that your dresses are like Christians, your culture is like Hindus. These are the people where even the Jews, you know, they get shamed of. They also get shy and they get ashamed that what kind of these people are. Don't they have any person to follow? Don't they have any person to follow like Sunnah of Prophet? They don't have any Sunnah of their Nabi. Jews would laugh on us. And this is what says. All rites and rituals are from Hindus mixed with Islamic culture then 
people normally don't say assalamu alaikum to anyone no system i and when i came out from the aircraft the first person i saw in lahore airport i said assalamu alaikum he didn't even reply to me as they people these people have no tendency you know to do say wa alaikum assalam i'm not saying they don't say many of them they do say but generally they have no idea of saying assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam this is it once you are come out from there how come what's happening to us then people speak with foul language they have to abuse they have to use four letter words in urdu of course that you sister four letter words you mother four letter words they have to use four letter word to insinuate to abuse in a jokingly or whatever this is the style had become prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the time will come when people will abuse a lot for no reason no reason that's their way of speaking idiosyncrasy this is what then no patience no akhlaq no tarbiya like like something no akhlaq no patience they break every light street light the rules the traffic rules everything they break the police system i saw my own eyes punjab police the guy is sitting he's not even the police in uniform he's just put his leg on the steering and he's enjoying and there's no number plate and then people say that these uh, these uh, what you call uh, cars vehicles the police even they drop little kids from school government gave them budget to protect people from our taxes and they themselves earning money through those vehicles and you said that this is system this is what you call corruption every system is corrupted and he's a policeman people are afraid of him because if you say that why you are doing this he will catch you and do put you into a case i said shame on you shame on this kind of system we are muslims what kind of muslims are we then you watch people have no patience people have no akhlaq they are rude they don't even have a basic akhlaq morality you go into the shop they you they see there is a queue going on the other guy will break the queue other will break the queue the break the queue this lecture is endless this lecture will be endless if i keep going on let's move to another part this is a small glimpse of socialism you do not follow system any system of islam you have laws there is no implementation ulama don't care they don't care frankly speaking yes they want to get the kursi in politics but they don't really care the law is going on or not allah will ask you on day of judgment allah will ask you that did you ta'muruna bil ta'muruna bil ma'ruf wa tanhauna 'anil munkar did you stop or not prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that there must be always a jamaa which always stop for from the evil and always give you righteousness the direction towards righteousness there must be there these nations muslims there must always one jamaa which should do this i don't see who is doing this i don't see then political system i don't have to speak much about that what political system we have instability dichotomy dilemma ambivalence confusion lies deception subterfuging bamboozling deceiving all these kinds of adjectives we can put them every person lies 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 no shame on their faces this is what you play with people how can you play with people what happened to you you don't have any heart how can you don't feel any empathy or sympathy towards the fellow man or your brother prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that all umma is one body if one part is like in pain you must feel the pain but here forget about the pain all the political system has been corrupt now which part you going to straight jacket incorrigible la islah everyone comes and makes promises and do nothing you can't do anything why don't you understand because you broke the vada the covenant the oath you took while you made the genesis of pakistan the introduction or the identity you broke it allah is giving you destruction from everywhere can't you see that 
The rain is not happening on the right time. All the rulers are sitting on your head by force. What else punishment you need? Do you want really, literally, that Allah opens the uh, earth or falls some comets from the sky? Is that what you are waiting for? What are we waiting for? Ideology, the concept is full of enslavement. Mental enslave. Karte hain ghulamo ko ghulami pe raza mand. Aur taweele masail ko banate hain bahana. They are themselves are slaves. And then they persuade other people to become slaves. Why? And at the end they say that no, because the time and the circumstances are like this. We are weak. We are weak, so you know, that's why we have to be slaves. I say shame on you. A Muslim cannot be a slave to any other system, any other man, any other woman. A man, a Muslim person cannot, because once he says, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, that there is no God and deity except Allah. And Prophet Muhammad is the last the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It means that your tawakkal, your life and the death, which is also in Surah Al-An'am, chapter 6, 162. That kul inni salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. When you already say that these lives and my efforts, my everything is for Allah, then why are you afraid? How can you be afraid of any nation? What is the last point of you? Death, right? What else are you going to do? This is the final point of every person, death. And Muslims, that is our faith. Everyone has to die. But we cannot live like the hyenas. We cannot live like donkeys. Can't you understand this point? We are Muslims. And this, is, should, this should be inculcated in us. The bravery. The boldness. We should not be afraid of anyone because when you say we are Muslim, it means that all my life and everything in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Death will come when the time will come. Death will not come. And this is also the message from Khalid ibn Walid when he was dying on his bed, uh, deathbed, bedridden. He said that to tell to the people that if the death was to come, then Khalid ibn Walid was dead long away. Because he fought many great battles and he urged for, uh, you know, getting martyred in the way of Allah. But Allah, is, uh, you know, didn't want that. And when he was dying and he gave message to the cowards that don't get afraid. If death was something to, to catch you, then Khalid ibn Walid would have died long ago. Uh, he's alive with all bruises. And he said that there's not a single part in my body where there is no bruise of fighting. Then why are we afraid? What's the matter with us? It's mental enslavement. Mental enslavement is the worst, worst, worst kind of comfort zone. Every one of us has developed a comfort zone in Pakistan. People living in the area, they said that, okay, we are picture perfect. We don't need any kind of reformation. We don't need any kind of correction. We don't need any straight jacketing. So now he has his comfort zone. He has his made his own way of criterion to go to paradise. Tazkiyah and nafs. A zone. He thinks that these are my aqidah, these are my doctrine, these are my dogmas. I have to do this, these, these things. And this is enough. My rites and rituals are enough. I don't care people die or people are alive. What's happening in Palestine, I don't give don't care what's happening in Burma. I don't care what's happening in Syria. I don't care. What's happening. On and on. I have my own comfort zone. I am going to Jannah. You know, there is a hadith of Prophet Hadith Qudsi. Jibreel alayhi salam came to Prophet salam and said, Allah commanded me to Jibreel, go to one of the cities and destroy that city upside down. And then I said, Jibreel is quoting. Then I said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, there is one abd, there is one slave of yours who is not leaving you into seclusion even the blink of an eye. Tarfatul Ain. He is not leaving you and he's doing worshipping. I said, who is which saint or Sufi is right now alive who is not leaving Allah into seclusion for the blink of an eye? Do you have any candidate? No. What Allah says? Allah says, Jibreel. Throw that city on his face first, 
then kill others. Why? Because this guy is doing worshipping and he does not care what's happening around him, surrounding, around his environment. This is it. You think your rites and rituals will save you? No! Rites and rituals along the methodology of Prophet that you have to live for others, don't be animals. Then you are being, you know, salvaged. Otherwise, you will have your own tazkiyah nafs. Implementation of khilafah. This is Islamic social, political, economic system. You call it khilafah, whatever you want to change the name, it's up to you. But the system was that everything is going through the methodology of Prophet ﷺ or Sunnah or Hadith or Quran. This is the principle. You want to change the name into put democracy, you want to change it to kingdom, whatsoever. As long as it is the effect of Khilafah, meaning you are representative of God, you are a viceroy of God, acceptable. This is what Islam is. But now look at us, what we are doing. We have laws, but we don't follow it. This is our own taskiyah and nafs. Political points are already said to you. As long as we are following the Western democracy to make those West people happy and we do not have a concept of free people, our free foreign policy, our free freedom in our ideologies, in our way of life, in our behavior, we have no salvation, we have no success. Keep wasting time. Allah knows in your heart that you are a weak person. You are, you are, you are a lion who likes to eat grass. Better hai share ko sikado rame ahu. It is better to teach a lion a flight like a deer. So baki na rahe sher ki sheri ka fasana. So the great legacy lions must forget that they used to eat with canines meat. They are predators. No, make them predator, but appetite must be grass. This is what we have become. Now, coming to economical system. I don't have to go far. Whole system in Pakistan is running under usury and interest. What Prophet says in the Hadith? Ma min qawmin yazharum fihi riba. Any nation whose statecraft is working under the dynamics of interest, illa ukhizu bisanati. The nation will go into deprivation, poverty, hunger, and famine. Wama min qawmin yazharu fihi her risha, rusha. Any nation who has a dynamics running through the system of bribery, that nation will become a petrified and terrified nation. Cowards. Cowardice. Cowardice is. You see, this is Prophet says that. Apply these to us, to our system. Pakistan, number one in bribery. Pakistan, number one in interest. You see, let me tell you something. I am not against my country. Please. I am talking about the system we are we have made with our own hand all this earth is allah's planet allah is allah is the khaliq it is your job what you are doing with your hands allah says in quran do not cause this destruction do not cause your own hands contribute to your destruction do good deeds everyone has been driven into some kind of fate and destination allah says do good Compete with one another in good works. Chapter number 2, verse 195. This is what we're supposed to do. So we are not blaming Pakistan. We are blaming what we have done to that country. The damage, the dent we have put it. And we promise Allah, since the genesis of Pakistan, what are we doing? So, economical system full of riba. So Prophet says, you do this. It means that the least 70s, it has a 70 branches of sin, the least sins, the value, the intrinsic value of that somebody is prohibiting or committing adultery or fornication, intercourse with his mother in the public. Astaghfirullah. Not even the lunatic or insane man can even think about it. Look how Prophet says, the, the, the strength, the, the strong message, message in this point. Nobody is moving. 
No moving, nothing. It's okay. Change the name. And Allah said the Quran, the people will come to you and convince you, say that, you know, we do business. Business is like riba. Allah says, no. Business is different. Tajara. Business in English means to buy and sell. That's it. A very short definition. Business means to buy and sell. But you make the ways into the business by putting two terminologies and your own ways and functions. So this, these are my analysis. Social laws, bad. Political laws, bad. And economical laws, bad. What is the solution? Come to the promise why we made Pakistan your true identity. Number two, implement the system of Islam in Pakistan. You don't do these two things. I'm telling you, there is no hope for us. وآخر الدعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين